Hey guys, I'm Phil the Blanks. Welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Red and Blue. So, uh, we are in Viridian City, which is the second city, but that guy, who's clearly not drunk, is uh, just kind of blocking the way. He won't let us go. And that's because, well, we still have Oak's Parcel, and what do you say? Uh, those Pokeballs at your waist. You have Pokemon, so I guess I have one. It's great that you can carry and use Pokemon anytime, anywhere, except not really, but whatever. Um, there's this guy who's trapped behind a tree. Don't worry, one day I'll rescue you, buddy. There's also a route down here. We're actually not going to take it yet. We want to go back to, uh, Oak. And, uh, there's also this kind of really weird section up here. With a tree. And it looks like we could skip, you know, the, 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 the laying down guy, but... We don't get the ability to, to, to do that for a long time, so I don't know kind of why it's there. Anyways, um, we have Oak's Parcel that we got from the Pokemart. And uh, the Pokemon Mart will not sell us anything until we kind of bring it back. So, like the guy said last time, we can just jump down these ledges. I'm going to try to avoid battles here because we're about to do something that makes battling a little bit more worthwhile for us. So, and that is, if you haven't played a Pokemon game before, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's catching Pokemon. So, do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Hello, Professor Oak, I have your, your thing, your sandwich or whatever. How is my old Pokemon? Well, it seems to like you a lot. Yeah, I let it kill things. You must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. Sure. What, you have something for me? Phil delivered Oak's parcel. His panini. Ah, this is the custom Pokeball. Oh, it's a Pokeball. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Mandark. <laughs> Gramps. His, his hair twitches, so weird. What did you call me for? All right, I have a request of you two. On the desk there is my invention, Pokedex. So the Pokedex was actually just invented this time. Huh. Uh, it automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Phil and Mandark, take these with you and fight for my love. <laughs> Phil got Pokedex from Oak, yay. To make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world. That was my dream. What a boring... Actually, that's a pretty good dream, to be honest. But I'm too old, so I can't. So I want you two to do my job for me. <laughs> Get moving, you two. It's like, well, I wanted to do something else. <laughs> this is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. All right, Gramps. Leave it all to me. Phil, I hate to say it, but I don't need you. You bastard. I know. I'll borrow a town map from my sis. I'll tell her not to lend you one. Phil, ah, ha, 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 ha. I'm Mandark. Pokemon around the world, wait for you, Phil. That's weird. All right, so Pokemon, yeah, you can't take his last Pokemon, which is a shame. So now that we have the Pokedex, um, you can kind of go into the Pokedex. It shows everything you've seen and everything you own. So I've seen four Pokemon, and I own one. Now this is a walkthrough for all 150 Pokemon in this game. So to uh, to the right, whoop, there is my Pokedex. So you'll be able to see how many uh, Pokemon I have. Uh, and here's also my badges, too. So, the way I'm doing this, too, by the way, is um, even though I only have one Pokemon, um, every time I get a new Pokemon, I'm going to count all their evolutionary stages in the Pokedex that I have. That way, you guys can, like, see what's the possible amount of Pokemon you can have, like, depending on where you are in the game. So, Bulbasaur can evolve into Ivysaur and into Venusaur. So, that's three right there. We could have chose Charmander, which turns into Charmeleon, then Charizard. That's six. And then there was Squirtle, which we won't, really kind of won't see in this game very much. Um, then that turns into Wartortle, and then Blastoise. So right off the bat, that is nine Pokemon that is, like, technically possible right now. So even though I don't have those in my uh, Pokedex at the moment, we're going to count that as nine out of 150. And that's kind of how the Pokedex thing on the, on the right of the screen is kind of going to work. So whenever I catch a Pokemon, I'm going to consider all its evolutionary stages as gotten. I'll still show you how to, like, do certain tasks that require certain Pokemon to, like, turn into certain other Pokemon. Um, but basically, you're probably thinking, well, if you chose Bulbasaur, how do you get Charmander and Squirtle? And that's where trading comes in. Remember that thing in the Pokemon Center? When you trade with other people, you can kind of get Pokemon. So the only way to get the other two starters that you didn't get, um, that's... That's how you get them, is from other people. Sorry, we're just getting the map from uh, Gary's sister. She doesn't really say much, just... Gary told me not to give you a map, but here's a map. The map is the same one I saw on the screen. You can see it at any time in case you're lost. So, you know, it's there in case you need it. Um, but yeah, so probably in next episode I'll have a Charmander and a Squirtle, just because I have multiple versions of this game. So, I'll be able to actually, like, 
have them, basically. So here's a Pidgey, and we're gonna catch Pidgey. Pidgey will be our first Pokemon we catch. And this is how you build your team. So if you wanted to, you could create a team and have Pidgey in it. So to how to catch a Pokemon is basically smack a Pokemon around, uh, you're gonna want them to be weak, and then use a Pokeball on them. Uh, I don't have any Pokeballs, I just realized that. <laughs> so I guess we can't right now, so we're just gonna beat the shit out of it. Um, <laughs> I totally forgot about that, that's the funny part. Uh, so Pidgeys though, Pidgeys are pretty good. On my first team, uh, when I first played this game, when I was 13, because this came out in 1998, uh, I had Pidgey um, in my team, and I had a Rotata in my team as well. So uh, it's very basic. They're very basic Pokemon, but if, hey, if you want them, then there you go. Um, who do we got? Rotata. Okay. So Rotata's not a great Pokemon. Um, it's somewhat fast. Uh, a lot of people really like him because it turns into Raticate, which allows you to get Hyper Fang. Uh, I guess Rotata can get Hyper Fang too, but you know what I mean. More powerful than they evolve. Um, and it, it's a decent Pokemon, but it's it's not amazing. Uh, it's better than Pidgey, I think, uh, because it has what's called uh, Stab. And I didn't talk about that yet. There's so much to talk about in Pokemon, about the mechanics and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to go to the Mart and buy some Pokeballs and I'm going to explain what Stab is. Stab stands for Same Type Attack Bonus. So, uh, for example, Rotata is a normal type Pokemon. So whenever it uses a normal type move, let's say Tackle or Hyper Fang, you gain a same type attack bonus because the attack and the Pokemon are of the same type. So it does 50% more damage. So having a Pokemon use attacks based on its own type is very, very, very advantageous. So having Pokemon with dual types can be very advantageous because you have more of a, of a move pool to be able to get stab bonuses, basically. Um, so Rotata has a few stabs, which is really, really great. Pidgey, on the other hand, doesn't get a really good stab for a long time. Uh, wing Attack is its like first stab, and it's weaker than Tackle. It's true that with the stab, it is better than Tackle, but like, that's still pretty bad. So Pidgey's not a great one, so I wouldn't recommend going to Pidgey. Uh, Pidgeys turn into Pidgey, uh, Pidgeotos and then Pidget, or Pidgeot, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Rotatas become Raticates. So we're going to catch... Um, Actually, I'll show you what Leech Seed does. Leech Seed is my first plant ability, um, or grass ability, I guess. And it uh, it absorbs, it kind of poisons the enemy, and I get a little bit of the health that it drops. So that's pretty cool. I really like that. So we're going to use an item. Pokeball. And we're going to move it to the top by pressing select. I can move around my things and my items. Uh, and I want Pokeballs near the top because I'm going to be using them the most. There we go. If uh, There's a whole mathematical equation, basically, to whether or not you'll catch things. And when they're weak, you know, you have a better chance. So... Yay, new Pokedex entry. Rattata. Bites anything when it attacks. <laughs> Small and very quick, but it is a common sight in many places. But there we go. If you want a normal type for this early in the game, this isn't the worst thing in the world to get. But there we go. So you'll notice I've added two more to my Pokedex because Rattata and Raticate count. So we're going to put two. Hello, another Rattata. So we're going to walk around until we get a Pidgey. So the way Pokeballs work and stuff, um, a Pokeball is the first type of Pokeball you can get. There's a Great Balls, there's Ultra Balls, there's different uh, types of balls you can get. Um, if you... If, if, as long as you get a Pokemon to 50% of its life, so its its life is yellow, you don't need to bring it down any lower for a Pokeball. That's the same with an Ultra Ball. Great Ball is weird. You have to, uh, th to get the best odds, you need to bring it down to a third of its health. Uh, and then if you can flick stuff like... Uh, sleep or, or burn or anything like that. You increase the odds. There's there's different ways to increase the odds there. But in terms of its life, with a Pokeball or an Ultra Ball, you only need to get the the po like right now would be perfect if I was trying to catch another Rattata, uh, which I'm not going to. But that that's that would have been enough to to get the maximum amount of like um, percentage extra percentage to catch the Pokemon. Um, that's true in this game. I have no idea if it's true in any other Pokemon game. So, there we go. And uh, we actually haven't even talked... Oh, there's Pidgey, by the way. So, like I said, Pidgey's not a great Pokemon, but I'm going to catch him. Um, we haven't actually talked about the difference, differences between Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. You can see from the left there how it says Pidgey and, and Redata. Uh, there's, like, a number that's in red, number that's in blue. Dif the different games have different percentages of being able to catch these Pokemon. So the ones that are red are the percentage of times you'll encounter a Pokemon in red, and the blue ones are the attempt, the amount, the percentage you'll encounter them in, in blue. Yay, Pidgey was caught! And that'll add Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot to my Pokedex on the right there. A common sight in forests and woods, it flaps its wings at, around, at ground level to kick up blinding sand. Woo! Um, I totally used a Pidgey the first time I played this game, and I liked him, but... And this is, this is something I want to really, really stress. There's no wrong team. 
in this game, because there's so few Pokemon, it's only 150, only, I love only, 150, um, you can do a team of whatever you want. And there's no really, truly, truly terrible Pokemon in this game. Um, so just have fun. You know what I mean? Don't don't be like, well, Phil told me that Pidgey's bad. I shouldn't use... No, no, no. If you want to use a Pidgey, go for it. You can still easily beat this game with a team of like what's considered not very good Pokemon. The team I'm using in this game, by the way, my final team, is not a team that I chose because they're good. It's a team that I haven't used before. Oh, good. He's gone. When I go shop in Pewter City, I have to take the Winding Trail in Viridian Forest. We'll have to do the same thing later to get to Pewter City. So, old man, are you okay now? Uh, I've had my coffee now and I feel great. Coffee? Sure, you can go through. Are you in a hurry? Uh, yes. Time is money. Go along then. Oh, I didn't know you could skip this. He's a tutorial, so let's actually do it. Um, I'm in a hurry. No. No, whoops. <laughs> Smashing the A button. Uh, this guy will teach you how to catch Pokemon if you haven't caught, if you haven't done it already. So you're using a Pokedex. When you catch a Pokemon, how do you know what a Pokedex is? It was just invented. Pokedex is automatically updated. What? You don't know how to catch a Pokemon even though you've already caught two? I'll show you how to then. He doesn't really explain it very well. It just kind of goes into a mock battle with a Weedle, a Pokemon we have not seen yet. Um, and he just catches him. And this, like, lies to you, because he just goes in the item, gets a Pokeball, and throws it and catches it. So, you do have to weaken them. I mean, there is a possibility that you can catch up any Pokemon by just throwing a Pokeball. Even, like, the rarest of Pokemon that has, like, really bad chance of catching, you still do that. First, you need to weaken the target Pokemon, unlike what I did. So, you do, you should have to. Uh, by the way, even though we didn't actually see a Weedle, it counts this as seeing a Weedle. So, interesting. Uh, we can also go to the, the gym here. Viridian City Pokemon Gym. Hello, old man. This Pokemon Gym is always closed. What? I wonder who the leader is. Yeah, what kind of gym leader would just have his Pokemon Gym all closed up and stuff? I want to fight. Hello? The gym's doors are locked. That sucks. All right, so um, we could continue up, which is kind of the normal route, but we're going to do some optional stuff here to the, uh, the route to the left. I believe it's Route 22. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but here are the new Pokemon I can catch on the left there. So we're going to catch these uh, three new Pokemon. Um, you can see down here there's it's kind of a weird road that doesn't go anywhere. So. There we go. <laughs> I find that really weird. It's, I guess so you don't have to like go through the grass when you want to come back. Now this is kind of important. So there's this grass field right here. Don't go past it. Don't go to the left. Because then you'll go into an optional boss fight. We're not going to want to do that yet. So there are three Pokemon around here. Um, that we're gonna, you know, just kind of wander around until the fight. Until then, I might as well explain a couple more things. What we're we talking about. So, that's the difference between Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, is the percentage of, of how many times you can see each Pokemon, or what the percentage of, of the encounter. Some Pokemon will not appear in Red, and some will not appear in Blue. So that's the whole trading thing, is that's how you trade, is, is to find a friend with the opposite game, and then trade for Pokemon that you don't have. Um... Uh, for example, I'm playing blue, so the Nidoran female is really easy to find, but the Nidoran male is much harder for me to find. Uh, and that, that kind of goes on in most routes, where there's one Pokemon that's easier in one uh, game than the other. There's also the third game in the series, Pokemon Yellow. Now, if you're playing along with me and you're playing Pokemon Yellow, you can still totally play with me and still get a lot of this. Um, but Pokemon Yellow has a bit of differences, things like you don't get a starter of Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, you can get them later. You start with a Pikachu that you can't evolve. Um, also, the percentages of Pokemon and sometimes where Pokemon will appear are different than what they are in red and blue. I will not be um, showing off the percentages on the left like I am with red and blue. I kind of just don't have room to fit a third game and just it's just too complicated, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, there we go! Nidoran female! There we go. She's adorable. I really like Nidoran female. Uh, Nidoran female and Nidoran male are the only two gendered Pokemon in this game. In later games, all Pokemon are gendered or purposely not gendered, so they kind of changed that. Uh, Nidoran uh, is really cool. So there's a Nidoran female and Nidoran male. If you're to choose one, sorry to say, but choose Nidoran male, just better. Uh, that being said, the Nidoran lineup are great. So Nidoran female can turn into, is Nidoran female, Nidorina, and Nido Queen. Um, they are, I believe they're ground type. Um, poison ground? Yeah, I think so. Um, poison Pin Pokemon. Although small, its venomous barbs render this Pokemon dangerous. The female has smaller horns. Um, actually, I think maybe uh, the, the lesser evolved ones are just poison type. Uh, when they become Nido Queen, and when uh, Nidoran Male becomes Nido King, they're phenomenal Pokemon. If you were to choose one, I'd say Nido King has higher strength, 
and I believe defense as well. Uh, they have some great moves. Uh, they can learn some amazing moves. They're they're really great. Nidoking King is one of the best Pokemon, I think, in the game. If this is your first time playing, you want a relatively easy time through the game, getting a Nido King, or sorry, a Nidoran male here is definitely one of the ways to go. I'd really, really recommend it. Um, I've never played with a Nido Queen, but I've played through with a Nido King. So, yeah, but also grew to level 9. So, yeah, my team in this, by the way, like I said, are going to be Pokemon that I've never actually played through the game before with. Uh, and that, I, I think, is the fun thing about the old Pokemon games uh, with Red and Blue, because there's not, a, like, there's not a billion friggin' Pokemon, like, in the later games. In this one, it's fun to go, kind of go back and be like, I'm going to use this Pokemon instead of this other Pokemon. And I'm actually getting to a point now where I've always played the, the game with each Pokemon at least once. So, and, um, that means my team isn't optimum, uh, optimal. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've got some Pokemon in my main lineup here that aren't going to be any good. And anyone out there who's like competitive or like knows a lot about Pokemon, we're like, "Geez, Phil, why'd you choose those guys? These guys suck." I don't care. I just want to have fun. Hello, Nidoran female. Um, anyways, uh, I'm just going to walk around until we see um, either a Nidoran male or a Spearow, which are the other two Pokemon I can get here. And I'll see you guys when that happens. Oh, there we go. Woo! This is a Nidoran male. Like a Nidoran female, becomes a, a Nidoran male becomes a Nidorino instead of a Nidorina, and then a Nido King instead of Nido Queen. Uh, like I said, Nido Kings are really awesome. Uh, slight, uh, they have a higher attack, and it wasn't defense. I looked it up. It was higher attack and higher speed. Uh, the females have higher HP and higher defense. But again, great uh, move pool. Plus, being faster can use one hit kill moves a lot easier, and Nido King has a one hit kill move. So yay. Um, Nidoran male stiffens its ears to sense danger. The larger its um, horns, the more powerful its secreted venom. There we go. That's another three for the Pokedex. Wow, we're doing really good already. Now, obviously, that is not the amount of Pokemon I actually have for my Pokedex. It's just how many you kind of can have based on what you can catch. Now, unlike all the other Pokemon I have, what are the odds of catching another Nidoran male right now? Well, not catching, but encountering one. Um, unlike the other Pokemon that I've gotten so far, like uh, Pidgey, Rattata, and Bulbasaur, who evolve through levels, uh, Nidoran, male and female, can't evolve to their final stage until something else happens, not through level. And when that happens, I'll explain that. And that's that's in a few episodes. So um, even though I'm counting them in my Pokedex, um, as I was already caught, like a Nido King and a Nido Queen, you can't actually get a Nido King and a Nido Queen uh, until a little bit later in the game. But I'll explain that when I come to that. So I'm going to keep fighting until I find a Spearow. There we go. Woo, Spiro. So Spiro, unlike Pidgey, only has one evolution after this. Spiro into Firo. But if you're going to get a flying type Pokemon early in the game, Spiro is the way to go. Oh, yeah, I'm using my Nidoran. You look like a cute little bunny, eh? Um, you're going to want to use Spiro, not Pidgey. Spiro is stronger, has better stats, and has a much better stab move. And that is uh, Drill Peck, I believe. Um, which is way better than, than Wing Attack. Plus, Drill Peck, you can get level 29 or level 34 if it's evolved into Firo. Um, ah, shit! Oh, man, my Bulbasaur is dead! <laughs> no, Bulbasaur! Oh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just go in there with Rattata. Uh, just gonna catch him anyways. Oh, Rattata's so cute! Look at him! Um, so yeah, Spiro is, is by far the better one compared to Pidgey. Pidgey's, like, different because it's a normal flying type. I think Spiro's just a flying type, so... Whatever. Uh, Spiro's better. Let's catch Spiro. There we go. So that's a Spiro and a Firo added to my Pokedex. Wow. We're doing really good. <laughs> um, new Pokedex stuff will be added. Tiny Bird. Uh, eats bugs in grassy areas. Woo. It has uh, wings to... Sh blah, short wings to high speeds of the airborne. Sorry. I like. I was like reading in my head and not in my mouth. <laughs> not from my mouth. But yeah, Spiros are really good. If you're going to go for a flying Pokemon, get a Spiro. Not, not a Pidgey. But again, if you just want a Pidgey because you really like the way Pidgeys look, do that too. Not a big deal. You'll also notice that I was using uh, my Nidoran at the beginning. That's because even though Nidoran won't be part of my main team, because I'm only naming Pokemon who are part of my, name team, my, my main team, uh, having Nidoran at the beginning allows it to get experience even if it doesn't do anything in the battle. That's how you kind of level up uh, smaller and weaker Pokemon. Um, and that way, uh, I still have another Pokemon in, in, to, to kind of battle with other than Bulbasaur until I start getting my main team. I'm going to heal up my Pokemon, I'm going to go back, and I'll meet you back there. We're going to go for our first optional fight. Um, if you go past here, this is an optional fight. You do not need to do this, but once you step past here, there we go. There's our douche Mandark. Hey, Fel, you're going to Pokemon League? Forget it. You probably don't have any badges. Neither do you, man. 
The guard won't let you through. But by the way, did your Pokemon get any stronger? And you have a fight. Now this is actually a fairly decently hard fight. He's got two Pokemon, a level 9 Pidgey, and I believe a level 10 of whatever he chose. So Charmander in my, in my thing. Um, and level 9's pretty high. So we got a level 3 Nidoran. Oh man. We're going to swap out for Bulbasaur. Um, now the reason I have Nidoran, like I said before, even though Nidoran didn't do anything in this fight, Nidoran will get half the experience. Any Pokemon that's in the fight will get a share of the experience. And that's how you get weaker Pokemon to level up. So, ooh. Gus is thankfully not a flying type, because flying type would actually be weak or uh, strong against Bulbasaur, a grass type. So he's just gonna use Gus, which is a weirdly enough a normal type attack in this game. It does become a flying type attack in other games. Sand attack sucks because sand attack takes away my accuracy just like that, so I missed, so that's great. But oh man, I'm doing I've got I've got one potion. I can't buy potions at the Pokemart, but I do have one from that guy who gave one to me. So I should still be fine, because now Pidgey's dead. And Charmander might start using things against me. Yeah, you need to ring grid level four. Woo. Uh, Bulbasaur grain, gain lots, through level 11. Nice. Always helpful. All right, Charmander. So what I'm going to do here is a weird technique. So Nidoran's going to go in. That way Nidoran will count as it's in the fight. We'll get experience for a level 8 Charmander. Oh, I thought it was level 10 Charmander. Oh, nice. That's good. It means it probably doesn't have Ember. Uh, so what I'm going to do is change Pokemon to uh, Cannon Fodder, basically. My Rotata. Um... Changing your Pokemon in will guarantee that that, po that the other Pokemon will get an attack in and use Growl like an idiot because that just lowers my attack, who cares? While Rotata's out, I'm going to use my potion on Bulbasaur. Thus, I'm not, you know, taking a hit for Bulbasaur. So Rotata's kind of just like buffering a thing. And now while um, Rotata's out, I don't really care if he survives or not. So I'm just going to use Tail Whip a bunch because Tail Whip lowers Charmander's defense. That way when Bulbasaur comes out, Bulbasaur will be that much stronger. Whew. So yeah, I'm just using Rotata basically as a... Uh, just as a, a pawn, basically. Just keep using Tail Whip, and that way defense will keep going down. There we go. All right. Um, I could use Pidgey, too, to lower his, uh, his accuracy, I guess, too. Oh, I don't have Sand Attack. Well, shit. I guess I'll just use Gust. Lower his attack a little bit. That way it just makes it easier for, for, for Bulbasaur to get in that, that final hit, which I shouldn't have any problem with. One Charmander. Kill Pidgey. Jeez, this Pidgey's strong. Probably because Gust is technically a stab attack for Pidgey because it's a normal type. Uh, Pidgey is normal and flying, so... Wow, is Pidgey going to kill Charmander? Come on, man, I don't want Pidgey to get the experience. Ah, uh, come on. Holy crap, I can't believe... Oh my god. Really? There we go, come on, kill me. Damn it! <laughs> that was a critical? Wow, this is a, not a very strong Charmander. Wow, I thought I was going to have trouble with this fight, but I guess not. Oh, ugh. Whatever, let's just... Friggin', I could just use something to make him kill me, but I don't want to waste my antidotes. Whatever, let's get Bulbasaur out here. That way at least Bulbasaur's getting some experience. So now that I've had three Pokemon in this fight... The, the experience will be cut into three, basically. So that means Pidgey stole some of my experience, that jerk. Oh, uh, well, that was easy, man. Mandark, it's gotta be better than that, man. Pidgey gained stuff, don't care. Let's feed a Mandark, damn right I did. Aw, oh, you just lucked out. All right. <laughs> I got money. Oh, yeah, you get money by winning against trainers. I heard Pokemon League has many tough trainers. I have to figure out how to get past them. You should quit dawdling. Quit off. Screw you. Get a move on. What a dick. What a dick. This weird hair movement. So yeah, if you do keep going, um, this is where the Pokemon League, the final area of the game, is. Um, but they won't let you through because you do need the badges, uh, like he said. Uh, Pokemon League front gate. Uh, so a guard will stop you at each like checkpoint, and they'll check to see if you have the appropriate badges. And I won't be able to get past here. Because I do not have the boulder badge. Only truly skilled trainers are allowed through. You don't even have a friggin' badge. It's like, well, I'm skilled. I beat I beat Mandark with a Pidgey. You don't have the boulder badge yet. The rules are rules. I can't let you pass. All right, well, with that, I'll meet you guys back in Viridian City. Uh, I'm Phil Blanks. I'll see you guys next time for more Pokemon Red and Blue.